everyone in this video we're going to be comparing two numbers two very irrational numbers we have pi over 24 and square root of 6 minus square root of 2 all over 8 now both of these numbers are irrational but one of them actually belongs to a very different category of irrational numbers which is called transcendental numbers you can go ahead and look it up or if you know the definition, please write down in the comment section down below. Anyways, let's see how we can compare these two weird numbers. If you've done a little bit of trigonometry, you will probably recognize this. But if not, don't worry, I'll tell you all about it. We have pi over 24 and square root of 6 minus square root of 2 over 8. Now, we're going to be looking at a unit circle, which means a circle whose radius is 1. And I have a picture for you right here. And in this unit circle, as you can see, kind of like part of the arc, because it wouldn't fit, obviously, or it will be too small. This angle is pi over 12 radians, or we can call that 15 degrees if you are more familiar with degrees. But we're going to stick with radians because you'll see in a little bit why. Now, we do have a couple different pictures here, so let's go ahead and call this point maybe O for origin, and then let's call this point A, point B, and then we can go ahead and call this point C. So now we can talk about a couple different things here. First of all, OAB is a right triangle, right? So, and the radius is one because this is a unit circle. So what does that tell you? On the unit circle, hopefully you do know that the coordinates of point B give you the cosine and sine of the angle respectively. Since we're in the first quadrant, the lengths are also coordinates, so it doesn't matter, but in general, those are going to be coordinates. Could be negative or positive, okay? So if you consider point B, the x-coordinate of point B is going to be cosine pi over 12. So OA is actually cosine pi over 12, and AB is going to be sine pi over 12. Make sense? Okay. Those are going to be the lengths. And the hypotenuse is obviously 1, right? Now, we're going to consider a different triangle here, which is actually more interesting. And that is going to be the OCB triangle. Okay, triangle OCB. I want you to focus on that one. And notice that it's not a right triangle, but it's an isosceles triangle, right? It is the actually two of the side lengths are 1, 1 each. And what is BC? That's a good question. Actually, to, we're going to find the area of triangle OBC. So to find it, do we need to know BC? And the answer is no. Because if you think about it trigonometrically, and I have a bigger picture for you coming up, if you have a triangle like this, let's say this is alpha, and this is A, and this is B, the area of this triangle is actually given as 1 half AB sine alpha. Awesome. And here's what we're going to compare. We're going to compare the area of OBC and the area of the sector OBC. They're both OBCs, but one of them is a circular sector. Let's go ahead and take a look at a bigger picture, shall we? Here's a bigger picture to help you, you know, understand better. So now here's what we're going to do. We're going to look at the area of this big, big triangle. Let me shade part of that. As you can see here, that's the triangle we're going to look at. And it's basically made up of this. The side lengths are 1, 1, and this is pi over 12. So the area of O, and that will be OCB, right? OCB. The area of OCB would be what? 1 half times 1 times 1 times sine pi over 12. Awesome. That's going to give us the area. And then we're going to compare it to the area of the sector. Notice that the area of the circular sector is slightly bigger. Why? Because of this little piece here. Look at that. You see? Or looking at the bigger picture, we're talking about this little piece here. Make sense? Okay. If I can zoom in, show you a little better. So this area, additional area, makes the sector area a little bit, a tiny bit bigger. But what does this have to do with our numbers, right? We're going to get to that. Don't worry. Let's go ahead and set it up first, and then we'll transition to the irrational world. Okay? So what is the area of sector OCB? 
the area of the sector is actually one half times alpha times r squared. Now you're like, where does that come from, right? Let me tell you about it. So if you consider a circle, and let's say we come up with an angle alpha, such a horrible circle. I know notability can give me a ni uh, nicer circles, but let's just do with this our, for our purposes. Let's settle for this. And the area of the sector is basically, it's a fraction of the area of the circle. How do you find that fraction? Easy. The whole circle is pi r squared. You multiply that by alpha and divide by 360 degrees. Wait a minute. What if alpha is measured in radians, not in degrees? Good question. In that case, you can replace 360 degrees with 2 pi radians. Easy. Let's just do that and we get the conversion right away. Take a look. Pi cancels out. We get 1 half r squared alpha or just r squared times alpha divided by 2. It's that, that easy. If you want to memorize this or you can do the degree version, which is probably more intuitive, but that's the area of the sector. So in our case, alpha is pi over 12 right, which is 15 degrees, and r is 1, because that's a unit circle. So the area of the sector is pi over 24. Uh-oh, this makes more sense, right, because one of our numbers was pi over 24, remember? And the other number is square root of 6 minus square root of 2 divided by 8. So that better be connected to sine pi over 12. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about next. So what is sine pi over 12? Because that's what I need, right? To find the area of triangle a a OCB, by the way, I should tell you that the area of the sector is bigger than the area of the triangle. You get the idea? So let's go ahead and write each one down. So area of the sector is pi over 24. So pi over 24 is greater than the area of the triangle, which is 1 half times sine pi over 12. Let's see how we can use this inequality to compare our numbers. That's ex exactly what we're going to talk about now. So what is sine pi over 12 in other words, right? How do you find sine 15 degrees? If you like degrees better like me, I don't like radians, but sometimes I just have to use them. Well, we can actually use an identity like this one, a formula for the difference, the sign of a difference. This is, these are called difference formulas. Okay, let's put the degree formulas, I mean degree symbols. Sine 45 times cosine 30 minus sine 30 times cosine 45. Hopefully you know these values because these are special triangles. This is root 2 over 2. Cosine 30 is root 3 over 2. Sine 30 is 1 half, which is the same as cosine 60 degrees, by the way. And this is root 2 over 2. And this gives us root 6 minus root 2 over 4. So that's what sine pi over 12 is. Let's go back to the radian word, okay? But... I do have half of that exactly what I needed, right? This is actually root 6 minus root 2 over 8. And this just shows us what? This shows us that pi over 24 is greater than root 6 minus root 2 over 8, which is what I was trying to compare. Okay, great. So pi over 24 is a winner, but let's go ahead and look at the numerical values, right? And as you can see here, pi over 24 is slightly bigger than root 6 minus root 2 over 8. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.